He is massively popular and he led his party to win Thailand's general election in May. But that's still not enough for Pita Lim Chen Wen Rat to be voted in as Thai's next Prime Minister yet. On Thursday, he failed to reach the majority needed to become PM in a parliamentary vote, which was a critical test of his political clout. The leader of the Progressive Move Forward Party was short of 51 votes to get the minimum of 375. As a young reformist politician at 42 years old, he was the only candidate running for the top job. With, with the results of what happened in the parliament today, I accept it, but I'm not giving up. I also accepted that it's below expectations in the sense that a lot of people didn't come to become quorum as well as um, not voting as uh, they wish. And I understand that there's a lot of pressure on them as well as uh, several incentives that didn't allow them to vote uh, in alignment with the people. Strong conservative forces within Thailand meant Mr. Peter's bid was always going to be a long shot. So what happens now? Well, let's get to the point with Indochina Bureau Chief Tan Hui Yi. Hui Yi, Peter's still the favourite to be elected as Thai's next PM, but he didn't get enough votes in the lower house. What happened there and what are the stumbling blocks for him, You know, including legal challenges uh, threatening to disqualify him? Yes, so um, Peter's Move Forward Party has a progressive agenda. It wants to cut down military influence and dismantle monopolies and decentralize decision making in Thailand. So that threatens the position of the old elite. But the biggest factor was Move Forward's stance on the royal defamation law. The, this penalizes anyone who insults or defames the king, queen, or heir apparent with a jail term of up to 15 years. And any person can make this complaint against any person. And uh, pre-trial detentions are common under this charge. So Move Forward argues that this is often misused for political ends and wants to amend this law. But the royalists say any attempt to amend it is like an attempt to dismantle the monarchy itself. And that was the sticking point for the MPs and the senators who either abstained or refused to support uh, Peter for Prime Minister on Thursday. Uh, we saw that over and over again during the six-hour debate, uh, these legislators attacked Move Forward for its agenda, and even at one point, they claimed that it was the instigating the student protesters on the streets. So, what happens next? Uh, protests are brewing across Thailand. Could we see a similar uprising like what happened with the Red Shirts political protests in 2010? Well, the protests in 2010 ended in quite, amount, quite a significant amount of bloodshed uh, with the use of life bullets. And I think all parties are keen to avoid that scenario. A more appropriate comparison, I think, would be what happened in 2020 after the Future Forward Party, the predecessor of Move Forward, was dissolved um, and its party executives uh, banned from politics. Uh, the student protests that uh, broke out and grew all over the country, right? Uh, discontentment grew uh, over how the current uh, caretaker government was handling the pandemic. And then people started demanding a reform of the monarchy. Uh, those protests were largely peaceful, but the police at times uh, resorted to the use of tear gas and rubber bullets. Those protests eventually died down as the economy opened up and uh, protest leaders were hit with several charges and detained for stretches. Now, all of that could return. The Constitutional Court has accepted two cases for consideration. Uh, the first was uh, put forward by the Election Commission. It alleges that uh, Peter should be disqualified uh, from running for election because he had owned shares in a media company. Peter has said repeatedly that he was holding the shares as an executor of the estate of his late father. The second case alleges that move forward by aiming to amend the royal defamation law, is trying to overthrow Thailand's democratic regime with the king as the head of state. Now, this charge, if it is proven, could lead to the party being dissolved just like Future Forward. But we don't expect the cases to be resolved anytime soon. Um, there is also the possibility that the court may order Peter to be suspended from his duties pending a resolution. A second round of voting is scheduled for July 19th and Mr. Pita is trying again. Do you think we will see a new Thai PM then? Mm. 
that's really hard to tell. We could even be looking at a deadlock. You know, the minority legislators in parliament, those who are not in Peter's eight-party coalition, they have yet to put forward an alternative name for prime minister. And even if they did, they would not have enough votes to secure their choice of prime minister unless there are fractures within Peter's coalition. Um, and meanwhile, uh, Peter's name could be put forward again for a second vote. But uh, analysts say that it is unlikely he will be able to master even more support than he did on Thursday. Uh, the voting for prime minister is done through an open roll call. So there is an incredible amount of scrutiny on each uh, MP's choice. So it's going to be hard to persuade senators to switch sides and vote for Peter. Now there is another scenario in which uh, Peter Thai, the second largest party in parliament and also in Peter's coalition, uh, puts forward uh, another prime minister candidate, uh, which is uh, who, who might be more palatable to all sides. But that can be done only after negotiation with Move Forward. Um, whatever the case is, I think the Thais are raising themselves for disruptions arising from delays in the formation of this government. Um, the Budget Bureau has already stated that the, the fiscal budget for 2024 would need to be reconstructed if the new government is not formed within July. And this is looking quite unlikely at the moment.